Welcome to the YouTube channel, today I bring you a Pokemon What If If which is What If Ash and Serena traveled together to all Pokemon regions. Please subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon to keep getting notifications of my new videos. The wonderful world of Pokemon is full of beautiful and mysterious creatures that you will be stunned to see, in the sky, in the depths of the ocean, on the high mountains, even in the cities and towns, there is no place in the world where they cannot be found. You can go on an exciting journey chasing as many new dreams as there are Pokemon in this world. This is the story of Ash Ketchum who lives in Pallet Town, Kanto Region. His dad Red Ketchum is a Pokemon champion from Kanto Region and his mother, Delia Ketchum, is a housewife. And Serena Gabina, who's originally from Kalos Region. She had a mother named Grace Gabina and her father's name is Jade Gabina, who was the famous Rehorn Racers in Kalos. Pallet Town is the town where shades of people's Pokemon journeys await. Living in Pallet Town was none other than a family that has thrived many great Pokemon trainers called the Ketchums. The Ketchum family had many amazing Pokemon trainers from past generations, and one of them was Red. Red was the reigning champion of the Kanto region for many years defeating some of the greatest trainers out there. Red Ketchum had one great rival during his time, and that was Blue Oak, the son of the famous Pokemon professor Samuel Oak. Red and Blue have been intense in their rivalries since the day Red got Charmander and Blue Pot Squirtle. Blue always liked to mock Red around for lagging, but in the end, it was the Pokemon League that mattered as Red topped Blue on the big stage. Red eventually married his longtime girlfriend Delia, and the two had a beautiful baby boy named Ash Ketchum. Delia has been a loving mother for all of Ash's childhood, and his father did everything he could to step in to be a great dad. Then one day when Ash was six, Red had to leave Pallet Town which left Ash heartbroken. Delia understood what Red was doing, but Ash never knew why he left. The title of Kanto Region Champion was then passed on over to Blue Oak after Red departed the Kanto Region. Blue got married and had a pair of twins named Gary and Daisy Oak. His wife passed away when the kids turned five, so when Blue needed to start doing his duties with the Pokemon League, the kids would be left with his father Samuel Oak. Red and Blue both had another well-known friend named Rose Green who was a nifty Pokemon trainer, but not at the level Red and Blue were at. Rose was married to Daniel, a longtime friend she met in Celadon City, and they had a beautiful daughter named Leaf. Leaf always admired the adventure she had along with Red and Blue and wished to have that excitement. Ash, Gary, Daisy, and Leaf have become great friends with Ash and Gary dreaming of being Pokemon masters, and Daisy and Leaf wanting to complete the Pokédex. Ash was reckless at times, but he always had a good heart caring about others, Gary has a big ego where he is always arrogant, Daisy has been an observant girl who always keeps knowledge in for Pokemon and what his brother could be up to, and Leaf has been a bubbly energetic girl who always loved to play. The four were looking forward to the upcoming summer camp that has always been run by Gary's grandpa Professor Oak. It was a good chance for them to learn about Pokemon, and the environment they could be traveling in if they ever became Pokemon trainers. Pallet Town Ketchum Household. Inside the Ketchum residence were Ash and Delia. Ash Ketchum was the boy with spiky raven hair, and chocolate brown eyes while his mother Delia had auburn brown hair in a ponytail and chocolate brown eyes. I can't wait for summer camp where I get to meet all the Pokemon, Ash said to his mom. I know you can't dear, Delia said, you're so into Pokemon like your father was. Hey mom. I don't want to hear anything about dad, Ash sadly said, I still wonder why he left us. Ash, that's something we don't want to talk about, Delia said comforting his son, but one day you will get a good understanding. Ash has been down about his dad since he left, but all he could do for the time being was move forward. Delia was looking out the window and saw a moving truck in front of the house across the street. The house was vacant for some time but Delia was so happy someone was finally moving in. Nothing brings a smile to people's faces than new neighbors. I see our new neighbors are here, Delia said as she saw one woman and a girl come out of the truck, amazing, it's good to have new neighbors. 
One of the women had brown hair and a yellow pin into her hair wearing a black tee and baggy green pants, the other was a man with short raven hair wearing a white t-shirt with a green blazer, and blue jeans. They had a little girl with them who was around the same age as Ash. She had honey blonde hair and wore a pink dress. Ash, I'm going to meet our new neighbors, Delia told Ash, they even have a girl who's around the same age as you. Ash was just sitting there looking at his food while Delia went across the street to meet the new neighbors. Pallet Town New Neighbors House Knock knock. The brown-haired woman opened the door to see that their new neighbor Delia was standing there ready to greet them. I take it you are our new neighbors, the woman said. Pleased to meet you, my name is Delia Ketchum and I live across from you, Delia told the woman. It's so nice to meet you, my name is Grace Gabina. Grace said as the raven-haired man came by her side, and right here is my partner Jade Gabina, we moved from the Kalos region. Hello there, Jade replied, would you like to come in? I would be delighted, Delia replied. Delia entered the Gabina residence and could tell that there were plenty of boxes lying around so there was still some unpacking that needed to be done. As Delia was looking around, she could see plenty of trophies in one box. Wow, you have so many trophies, Delia said in amazement. That's right, we were both Rehorn racers back in our days, Grace said looking at the trophies, me and Jade were pretty much the biggest rivals in our days in the sport. It made Delia chuckle a bit because the fact Grace and Jade were big rivals in Rehorn racing, along with the fact they have won so many trophies, made her remember the days of her husband and Blue when they were competing against each other as Pokemon trainers. Wow, it reminds me of my husband when he was a great Pokemon trainer, Delia said admiring the trophies, my husband, Red, and his old friend, Blue, were great Pokemon trainers who won many Pokemon League competitions back in their day. Wait, was your husband? Red Ketchum. Jade questioned. Yes, Delia answered. Everyone heard about him, Jade said. He managed to win every Pokemon League in every region in the world. Not only did he beat all the Pokemon Leagues, he even beat all the Elite Fours and Champions, Delia explained, he even conquered the Battle Frontier. Wow, the Battle Frontier is possibly considered the toughest battle facility in the world, Grace said in astonishment, your husband actually beat the Battle Frontier. He sure did, Delia answered. Then Delia noticed the honey blonde girl walking around quietly. When she saw Delia, she looked nervous, and just ran off to hide somewhere. Was that your daughter? Delia asked. Yes, her name is Serena, Grace answered. I noticed that your daughter was pretty scared, Delia said. Yeah, well you see she has been pretty much of a social outcast, Grace explained, she didn't have any friends back in Van Town. She was really shy, Jade stated. It just brought tears to Delia's eyes to hear that Serena has no friends. Ash on the other hand has good friendships with Gary, Daisy, and Leaf. Ash wasn't sure about Gary, he was more of a frenemy. Then Delia thought of a good idea for her to try and help Serena out. Hey, Professor Oak will be having his annual Pokemon summer camp in a few weeks. Why don't you let Serena take part in the camp? Delia suggested. Where is this summer camp going to be, Grace asked. It will be in a wooded area near Pallet Town, Delia answered, I'm going to be sending my son there, and if she's lucky, she might actually get to meet him. Grace and Jade were thinking about it. This was a good opportunity for Serena to get out and make some friends. There had to be plenty of kids around her age wanting to at least give her a chance to be her friend. Grace, think it's a great idea, Jade responded, it might actually help Serena in making friends with not just the kids, but with Pokemon as well, know if she wants to become a Rehorn racer one day. Jade, I think that's a wonderful idea, Grace replied. Great, I'm so happy for you too, Delia said smiling, I'm sure your daughter will have a great time. The Gabina couple couldn't believe it, but they believed Delia could be right. Serena was showing no social improvements back in Kalos, so maybe it might help her in Professor Oak's summer camp. 
Hallett Town Summer Camp A beautiful summer day came in the forest as the kids were gathering around for Professor Oak's summer camp. Ash wearing a yellow shirt, blue shorts, and red sneakers, was all hyped up to know a whole lot about Pokemon, and so were Gary, Daisy, and Leaf. Meanwhile, on the other end of things, Serena arrived at the summer camp wearing a pink sundress and a straw hat. A man with light brown hair wearing a blue polo shirt, cocky shorts, and white sneakers was ready to run his annual summer camp. That man was Professor Oak, and he had a special guest with him. It was a man with stylish wavy raven hair and blue eyes, and he was dressed in an orange polo shirt, cocky pants, a green jacket, and a blue hat. Ah, Professor Augustine Sycamore, Oak responded greeting the Callows professor. Samuel Oak, it's an honor to meet you here, Sycamore replied. Why thank you, Augustine, Oak said as he noticed two Pokemon eggs, I see you brought some Pokemon eggs. Professor Sycamore had two Pokemon eggs in his possession. One egg was light blue with a few white marks, and another egg was orange with a red bubbly top and white on the bottom. Yes, these are Pokemon eggs from the Kalos region, Sycamore stated. I'm sure the kids would love to see those Pokemon eggs, Oak said. I'm sure they would too Samuel, Sycamore replied, especially after what these eggs have been through. I know what you mean, Oak sternly said. With that, Professor Oak and Professor Sycamore met with the kids to get ready for their camp activities. Ash was all ready for some action, and so were Gary, Daisy, and Leaf. Serena on the other hand didn't feel like she wanted to do anything except being alone. All right kids, I hope you're ready for today's activity, but first let me introduce you to someone special. He came all the way from the Kalos region, please give a warm welcome to Professor Sycamore, Oak announced as all of the kids gave a round of applause to the professor. Hello children, and future Pokemon trainers, after today's activity, I'm going to show you something amazing, Sycamore told the kids. All the kids were excited, especially for Ash as he was a big Pokemon lover. They were probably going to expect Pokemon the Kalos region to be presented, but they had to wait until after the activity. Okay Professor Sycamore, thank you very much, Oak said, now for today's activity, we're going to have a scavenger hunt. Now your objective is to find a certain Pokemon and bring it back here. The first two to bring their respective Pokemon back here wins. All the kids were going to take part in a scavenger hunt by finding certain Pokemon and bringing them back. The kids were given a photo consisting of the Pokemon they had to look for. Ash was given his photo, and the Pokemon on the picture was a blue tadpole with a clockwise swirl on its stomach. The Pokemon Ash had to look for was a Poliwag. Serena got a photo of the Pokemon she had to look for, and it was a picture of a green worm with big black eyes. The Pokemon Serena had to look for was a Caterpie. The kids were ready, but Serena didn't seem to care. Okay kids, on your mark, get set, go. Oak announced as the kids started to look for their Pokemon. As all the kids were running around looking for their respective Pokemon, Serena on the other hand didn't feel like she wanted to be part of the hunt. She just ended up wandering around the woods not knowing what to do. Despite this being the first time seeing the girl in person, Augustine had a feeling he knew who that girl was. I think I know who that girl is, Sycamore said. You do, Oak replied. Yes. Remember when I told you I had a friend whose daughters are a bit shy and don't socially active with any other kids, Sycamore explained. Yeah, I do, I heard we have a married couple living here in Pallet Town with a daughter that was very shy, Oak explained, are you thinking of helping the girl? I think it is Sycamore answered, I heard they named her Serena, I want to know if that's her. I see what you mean, Oak replied. Ash was running through the forest trying to find a Poliwag. He wanted to do anything to get his hands on a Poliwag and beat Gary. Here Poliwag, come out come out wherever you are, Ash said trying to call out Poliwag. Then Ash spots two Poliwag just standing there. He had a chance to get his hands on the tadpole Pokemon, 
so Ash snuck from behind to grab it, but it hopped away. Come back here, Ash called out to the Paliwag. Serena was running through the woods as she seems to be lost. Serena couldn't find anyone who was part of camp. She was all alone, scared, and afraid. Where did everybody go? Serena cried, Mommy, Mommy. Serena then heard rustling in the bushes, and a Paliwag jumped out which startled her. She fell to the ground and hurt her knee, and she began to cry. Then Ash came out of the bushes trying to look for that Paliwag as it was the photo that was given to him. Here Paliwag, Ash called out. Then Ash saw Serena laying on the ground with a hurt knee. Ash went up to Serena to check on her. Are you okay? Ash asked. I hurt my knee, Serena replied. Ash looked at Serena's knee, and he could tell that it was a small bruise. Ash pulled out a blue handkerchief. Here, this should help, Ash said tying the handkerchief on Serena's knee, pain, pain, go away. Now stand up. I can't, Serena solemnly said. Well you have to try, never give up until the end, Ash told Serena. Serena heard Ash's words of encouragement and decided to try and stand up. Serena got up on her feet, and she was able to stand. See, you stood up, Ash said until Serena fell into Ash's shoulder. Serena couldn't help herself but get a warm feeling around Ash. Serena never opened to anyone since she pretty much did not speak to anyone. How do you feel? Ash asked. I feel a bit wobbly, Serena answered. Hala test ES get you back to camp so the nurse can look at your knee, Ash suggested. Ash was able to help Serena up and began to walk her back to the campsite. The two decided to have a nice conversation. So, do you live around here? Ash asked. Yeah, me and my parents moved to Pallet Town a couple of days ago, Serena answered. Mom's Ash questioned, you have parents? Yeah, Serena responded, is something wrong with that? No, there isn't anything wrong with having two moms or two dads, Ash told Serena. As long as they stay around to love you, then they're great parents. Lots of people have families that are different. Really, what's your family like? Serena asked. Well, we're pretty much a normal family, just accept the fact that my dad was once the champion of the Kanto region, Ash said until he felt a bit gloomy, then he left us, and the Kanto region champion became his friend Blue. Why did you dad leave? Serena asked. I don't know, but no one wants to talk about it, Ash answered. Then, turning away from the sadness, Ash and Serena ended up seeing a caterpillar. Despite Serena being scared, she did remember the photo of the Pokemon she needed to try and bring back. Hey, I think I saw that Pokemon on my picture, Serena said pointing to the caterpillar. Of course, that's the Pokemon you probably had to bring back to camp, Ash said, go ahead and get it. Remember, never give up until the end. Remembering those words that Ash told her, Serena found the strength to walk on her own and approach Caterpie. Serena seemed afraid of the worm Pokemon, but as she got closer, she felt much more comfortable. Serena was able to pick up Caterpie and walk right back to Ash, and she didn't feel any more pain in her leg. I got it, I got Caterpie. Serena cheered. That's great, Ash said pumping his fists. Luck was on Serena's side, and little did Ash know, luck was on his side too. Jumping out of the bushes was the same Paliwag that startled Serena. Get back here, Ash yelled out to the Paliwag. Ash ran as fast as he could to catch Paliwag, and this time the tadpole Pokemon wasn't so nimble. Ash was able to grab Paliwag and walk back to Serena. You got Paliwag. Serena cheered. I sure did, Ash said with a cheesy smile, now let's head back to camp. Ash was happy that Serena's knee was feeling much better as she was able to toughen up and walk on her own. Ash happily carried Paliwag while Serena carried Caterpa back to the campsite where they met with Professor Oak and Professor Sycamore. Ah, you two came back with Pokemon, Oak said, 
let's see if you got the Pokemon that matches your picture. Professor Oak took the Pokemon and their pictures and smiled to the fact that the two Pokemon Ash and Serena have brought back matched the pictures. Ah, it seems you two managed to bring back the correct corresponding Pokemon first, Oak said, congratulations, you two win the scavenger hunt. Yay. Ash and Serena cheered. I'll let everyone know, Sycamore said. All the kids gathered around after Ash and Serena won the scavenger hunt. Gary was absolutely humiliated that Ash ended up beating him when he always wanted to beat him at everything. Daisy and Leaf were impressed that Ash won, and that he got a new friend. Gary, Daisy, and Leaf never seen the girl before but noticed that she seemed a teeny bit clingy around Ash. Congratulations Ash and Serena, you won the scavenger hunt, Oak said, and now Professor Sycamore will give you a reward. Professor Sycamore walked up to Ash and Serena carrying the two Pokemon eggs in a basket. Ash and Serena, you get a chance to hold actual Pokemon eggs which holds special Pokemon that can only be found in the Kalos region, Sycamore said setting the basket down. Ash picked up the blue Pokemon egg while Serena picked up the orange Pokemon egg. The two were happy about holding Pokemon eggs. So, these are Pokemon eggs, Ash asked. That's right, Sycamore answered. What Pokemon are in there? Serena asked. Right after Serena asked her question, the two eggs started to glow. Professor Oak and Professor Sycamore were amazed that they were hatching, while the other kids were amazed as well. When Gary saw that the eggs were hatching, he had to feel completely jealous. Lucky Ash, he muttered. The eggs finally stopped glowing, and two new Pock and Non came into the world. The Pokemon that came out of Ash's egg was a light blue frog with yellow eyes, and the Pock and Non that came out of Serena's egg was a little orange and red fox. Wow, I don't believe it, Ash said in amazement, we actually got to see Pock and Non hatch. The moment the blue frog saw Ash's face, the light blue frog Pokemon smiled at the little boy. As for Serena, the baby orange fox gave a happy hello to Serena, and she couldn't help but smile. Hello there, welcome to the world. My name is Ash, Ash said to the blue frog. Hi there, Serena happily said to the orange fox. Professor Sycamore, do you happen to know what these Pokemon are, Oak announced to the kids. Yes, I do, the blue frog that Ash is holding is called Froki, and the orange fox Serena has in her hands is called Fenekin, Sycamore explained to the kids, Froki is the water type starter for the Kalos region while Fenekin is the fire type starter for the Kalos region. Kalos region starters. Ash questioned. Yes, if you started your Pock and Non journey in the Kalos region, these would be the two Pock Dronon you would begin with, Sycamore explained. Ash was amazed at how cool Froka looked and would love to have a Pock and Non like him. Serena just loved how cute Fen Ekin was and how she could have a Pock for Mon like that one day. Both kids and the Pokemon were happy. Hey, why don't we get a picture to commemorate this joyous occasion, Oak said taking out his camera, say cheese. Cheese. Ash and Serena said while Froki and Fen Ekin all gave out smiles too as Oak took the picture. Beautiful, I'll give you kids a copy to remember this moment, Oak said turning to Professor Sycamore. And I'll give you one too. I'd be delighted, nothing has to impress me more than the kids' looks on their faces when they see Pokemon being born, Sycamore happily explained. Ash has always been a Pokemon lover and meeting all those Pock for Mon was a huge treat including watching a Froki hatch. Maybe that meeting Serena was going to lead to good things that were going to come into his life. For Serena, that meeting with Ash in the forest may be the best thing to happen in her young life. She got to make her first friend, she toughened up through a hurt knee, she won a scavenger hunt and got to watch Pokemon come into the world with her own eyes up close. Ash and Serena were able to play with Froki and Fen Ekin for a little bit before it was time for those two Pokemon to go back home with Professor Sycamore. There was one thing that no one seemed to notice, and that was the fact that Froki loved to play with Fen Ekin. She was the first Pock and Non that Froki has ever met in his short life, and Fen Ekin seemed to like him too, 
plus it eased, the hidden pain they went through as eggs. I'm glad you got to meet those kids, Sycamore said to Froki and Fen Ekin, I'll make sure you get all the love you can get. As the Pokemon summer camp was coming to an end the five trainers who were in the summer camp started to to become friends and start playing with each other with this after seven days of camp Professor Oak come to an end. As Serena Leaf Daisy and Gary have many e-memories of the summer camp with them after the summer camp was over many of them get their dreams and it was like to start working on them. After the summer camp was over, the family of Ketchums and Gabinas becomes good friends of each other. Ash and Serena played with each other while their parents were talking to each other. Serena was now also friends with Daisy and Leaf as Ash introduced them to Serena. As friends, Ash and Serena started caring about the Pokemon in Professor Oak Lab. One day Serena found an Eevee roaming around her house it was hurt. Serena take Eevee to her home and started taking care of the Pokemon. The day come when the Eevee was good to go in wild but she refused to let Serena and Pokemon want to stay with her. Serena's parents didn't mind letting Serena take care of the Pokemon. Ash had only one goal since childhood, that of becoming Pokemon Master one day. He started his preparation when he was nine years old. On his ninth birthday, he wakes up in the morning because today was his ninth birthday, after one year he will start his Pokemon journey. Ash's mother was preparing a good breakfast for her son because today is the birthday of their loving son. Then there is a knock on the door of their house. Delia opens the door she found a man holding a courier. Ash looks through his window, so a man came with a courier. Ash's mom take the courier from the man and took it inside. Ash came down from his bed, but in the excitement, he slipped his feet and fell down from the stairs. Delia says, Ash. You didn't get hurt. You should take it off the stairs carefully. Ash says mother I am fine. Nothing happened. Who is this parcel for? Delia said that this parcel has come in your name, open it and see whose it is. Ash opens the cover of the parcel so he gets a letter, he opens it and starts reading it my son Ash today is your birthday wish you a very happy birthday now it's time to start your Pokemon journey. After a year, you will have to start working so that you can become your goal Pokemon master, I have written my book in this parcel which will help you to become a good trainer. In this book, I wrote about all the Pokemon about their types, how to train them and be befriend with them and some more things that I learned along the way. You will get to know when you start reading the book. With this book, I am sending you two Pokeballs which contain two Pokemon who are very special and they will help you to become Pokemon Masters. These Pokemon in the two Pokeball are the children of my some loyal partner take care of them. It's also a bracelet and some stones. You'll find out what it means to them as you set out on your journey to becoming a Pokemon Master. All the best for your journey and do your best your dad Red Ketchum. Delia asked whose letter is Ash told that this letter was sent by dad. His mother took the letter from him and started reading and tears started coming from her eyes. Because she thought that Red was dead and he was on his journey, he sent gifts for his son. Delia wiped her tears and said to Ash, your dad has sent this book for you, so you will start reading from tomorrow itself. Ash said okay mom, I will start reading the book from tomorrow itself. Delia said that you open both the poke balls to see your new friends and meet them. See what Pokemons your dad had sent to you. Ash says okay mom, I am taking out to them now. Ash throws the two Pokeballs and Bright open two Pokeballs revealing two Pokemon one of them it is a small, blue, canine Pokemon. It has a black torso and legs, a blue tail, and a yellow collar. It has rounded bumps on the backs of its four paws. It has a black mask and red eyes. It stands on its toes instead of its entire foot. This Pokemon is Ryalu. It is a serpentine Pokemon with a blue body and a white underside. It has white, three-pronged fins on the sides of its head and a white bump on its forehead, which is its horn growing. Above its round, white snout are oval, purple eyes. This Pokemon is Dratini. Ash invites both Pokemon to him and speaks to them as far as Ash knew that these two Pokemon were Ryalu and Dratini. 
Both Pokemon were hesitant to approach him at first. After talking for a while, both of them felt Ash's sure that the two go near him and hug him and Ash's mother feeds both Pokemon and Ash and then all goes to meet Professor Oak. Ash shows his Pokemon to all his friends Serena, Leaf, Daisy, and Gary. They are amazed to see the Pokemon Ash have with him Ariolu and Dratini. Gary muttered lucky Ash he get these gift from his father not from his own way. As Ash's dad said, Ash does the same thing with, waking up every morning to read the book given to him and he used to help Professor Oak throughout the day at his ranch. During that time, Ash makes a good relationship with the Pokemon given to him by his father. He trains daily with them so that they can easily get to know each other. During that time both of Ash's Pokemon also evolved. Ryalu evolve in Lucario and Dratini evolve in Dragonair. Serena on the other hand, with Ash she also started training her Eevee to start her journey with Ash. She often take book from Ash and study it. She also caught something interesting in the book which is psychic power training to know Pokemon emotion and help them. Serena asked about the psychic from Delia. She told her about the power of psychic and history psychic user. Delia asked her to come to the Ketchum house for one hour. So she can tell her how to achieve that power and that could help her be a good trainer. Whereas Ash daily meditate in lawn of his house with Ryalu, now Lucario, to become Aura Guardian. This were the daily task that they do until they are 10 year old so that they start their journey. Now we skipped one year later in time, now all the trainers are 10 years old they all will be getting new Pokemon as their starter so that they can start their journey. All of them will be getting a new starter for themselves from Professor Oak. All of that will be in next part. Thanks for watching.